All right, guys, so as we start chapter three here in geometry, um, we're going to be talking about relationships and angles created when a line crosses over parallel lines or uh, a transversal crosses through or intersects parallel lines. Um, so our less essential question for the day, it's not a question, but it's an objective you got to be able to do, is describe four of the angles formed by a transversal line. Um, there are more than four, and we're about to go over them, but you need to be able to describe some of them. Some of our vocab listed at the top of the notes here, um, which this, this document is included in the folder just like normal, so you can print it out if you'd like, but you are not required to. It is for you and your note taking. Um, parallel lines are two lines that have the same slope. So it's two lines that never cross over each other. They never cross paths. There are two right here, line M and line K. Um, skew lines are, they more apply to three dimensional shapes. Skew lines are lines that aren't parallel, but they never intersect. And, uh, and we'll get into that much more a little bit later and a few lessons later on when we involve three-dimensional shapes, but that is a vocab word you'll need to know then. Parallel planes, just like parallel lines, these are parallel flat surfaces that never intersect each other. Uh, think about like a box, the top and bottom of a box, they never cross. Um, and then a transversal line. So a transversal line is a line that kind of cuts through other lines. So it's a line that intersects two or more lines in a plane at different points, right? So here um, we could draw uh, a line straight down through here, right? Or this transversal cuts through a plane. It cuts through other lines in a plane. So for our um, angle relationships down here, we have a big picture. It's hard to fit in. You have the document here in your folder, but it's hard to fit the whole uh, picture into the camera or whatever. So I tried to draw kind of a smaller version of it. So I have two parallel lines, um, and the lines don't have to be parallel, but these are two parallel lines cut by another line. And I highlighted my transversal line that cuts through in pink so you can tell what the difference is. Okay, so real quick here. The first vocab word we have to go over is corresponding angles. Corresponding angles happen if I were to draw a little window around each intersection of lines, right? This is where these two lines cross, so I draw a window around it. This is where these two lines cross, I draw a window around it. Corresponding angles are angles that are in the same position in each intersection. So if I was talking about um, this angle right here, this guy, the corresponding angle to that one would be this angle right here, because it's in the same position, right? This top box here, this top square, this top angle, is in the same position as this top angle down here. It's just a different intersection. If I were to take this window pane, or whatever you want to call it, this, this box, and set it directly on top here, these angles would lie directly on top of each other. So corresponding angles are angles that are in the same position, but at different intersections. So there's that. So for this first vocab word here, I've got my transversal line, that's kind of hard to see here, cutting through my other two lines down here, we'll get to them in a minute. And, um, and oh, up top here we wrote a transversal line is a line that intersects at least two other lines in the same flat surface, but for my corresponding angles. So for example here, corresponding angles would be six and two. They're in the same position. Corresponding angles would be five and one. Corresponding angles would be 8 and 4, and corresponding angles would be 7 and 3. If I were to draw something around this intersection and lay it on top of this intersection, corresponding angles would be the, right on top of each other. They'd be in the same spot. So we'll write down up here, for example, our corresponding angles in this picture are angles 3 and 7, and then uh, angles 1 and 2. Three and seven, one and two. That's just some of our examples, an example of some of the corresponding angles. Uh, we could also say angle one and five and angles four and eight. Those are all pairs of corresponding angles. They're in the same spot, one and five, four and eight, like we've already said. Okay, so what is a corresponding angle? Let's write that down. Angles on the same side of a transversal, angles, on same side of a transversal line 
and in the same position, but in different intersections. Okay, so that's our corresponding angle relationship. Corresponding angles, that's one type of these uh, angle relationships you should be able to describe here. If I have a transversal line cutting through two lines, it creates eight angles, two different intersections. So corresponding angles are in the same position but in different intersections like one and five. Okay, then we have vertical angles. We'll do that one next. We've already, you've already learned vertical angles. It's the bow tie angles, right? So for example here, vertical angles would be five and seven. They're created when two straight lines intersect. They're across from each other. It looks like a bow tie. Same with six and eight. Six and eight are vertical angles. They share a vertex. They're the same size. They're across from each other. Over here, one and three are vertical angles. And two and four are vertical angles with each other. Okay. So in my little vertical angles triangle area here, five and seven, six and angle eight, one and three, and angle two and four. Okay, and then what, what can we say about a vertical angle? Vertical angles are angles opposite one another when two lines intersect, and I'll call it the bow tie. Angles opposite each other when lines intersect. And we'll say bow tie in parentheses, just so you remember, bow tie angles. Okay, so that's our vertical angles. Then we have, uh, let's see, alternate, we'll start going over our alternate angles. So for our alternate angles, I'll go back to this little picture I drew because it's easier to see. Okay, how I want you to think of this drawing is, actually I can make another one. It'll just be easier to start over fresh. Here's my two lines, cut by, I'll do the transversal in pink again. Okay, so here's my sort of grid that I'm working with. I've got my two lines cut by this pink transversal. I'll put a T there so we know that's a transversal. All right, so our angle relationships. I want you to think of the area between the two lines as like a tunnel, right? So I'll highlight it in yellow. Everything in between these two lines, we're gonna call that the interior. It's inside, right? It's like in a tunnel, it's interior. Everything not interior is exterior, right? So this is interior, it's between those two lines. Everything else is exterior. Exterior. Okay, so when I have alternate interior and alternate exterior angles, Alternate means that these angles are on different sides of the transversal. So if one of my angles is on this side, the other angle has to be on this side. That's alternate. The opposite of that would be same side angles. So if one angle was on this side, the other angle would have to be on this side, right? So for alternate interior angles, there are gonna be two angles inside here that are on uh, in the interior on different sides of my transversal. So my angles on the interior here are these two and these two, right? This angle, this angle, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. Those are my four interior angles created by my transversal. So alternate interior angles would be here and here. They're on different sides of our transversal but they're inside this yellow tube area, right? I always used to say when I was teaching um, in the classroom that it reminded me of, and I've never been, so don't laugh at me, but like when you go paint, paintballing, paint, paintball gunning, paint, paintballing, I guess, um, it, like the idea of like when you're hiding, when there's like different things you can hide behind, whatever. So this would be like you're hiding behind a wall, you're on two different sides of the wall, but you're in between barriers, right? So you're alternate, interior, okay? Same side interior would be this angle. Here, I'll highlight it in pink. Mm. Same side interior would be this guy and this guy. 
They can reach out and hold hands. They're on the same side of the transversal and they're inside this tube area in, in between our two lines, right? So alternate is on different sides of the transversal. Same side is on the same side of a transversal. Um, so we have alternate interior angles. Alternate exterior angles would be like um, this angle is exterior. It's not in the yellow area, it's outside. This angle, this angle, this guy, this guy. These are our four uh, exterior angles. And if they're alternate, they have to be on different sides of our transversal. So that orange angle is an alternate exterior angle from this guy, right? Same with this angle is alternate exterior to this angle. Okay, so we've got alternate interior, which are inside the yellow, but on different sides of our transversal. Alternate exterior are out here, but on different sides of this pink line. Okay, hopefully that helps clarify it uh, a little bit. For the same side interior angles, we actually don't call them same side interior, we call them consecutive interior. So we're gonna get into all that here. So alternate interior angles in this drawing would be like um, two and eight. Two and eight, like you could draw a figure eight around them, right? They're on different sides of the transversal, but they're inside this middle tube area. Three and five are also alternate interior angles. Okay, so we're gonna write angles on opposite sides of a transversal inside the lines being intersected. Angles opposite a transversal and inside Lines being intersected. And examples would be, like we said here, um, angles five and three. Angle three and five, and also angles two and eight. And that's it, because angles one, four, six, and seven are exterior angles. They're outside of these two lines. Interior is inside. You're more protected inside, right? If you're paintballing and you're hiding somewhere in here, you're more protected. If you're out here on the outskirts, anybody can run around and get you, right? I guess, I don't know, like I said, I've never been. Alternate exterior angles would be one and seven or four and six. So alternate exterior are on opposite sides of a transversal. Angles on opposite sides of a transversal outside the lines being intersected. The lines being intersected uh, by the transversal. Okay, and examples would be, like we said, one and seven or six and four. So that's our alternate exterior angles. Then we have same side interior angles, which we call consecutive interior. They're one right after the other. Consecutive, oh, two eyes there, interior. I don't have room to write interior, so INT. And consecutive interior would be like two and five. They're right next to each other. They could reach out and high five each other if people were hiding in those corners, right? Same with three and eight. They're on the same side of the transversal, but inside this like protected area, right? So two and five or three and eight. And I don't have room to write what it is, but their angles on the same side of a transversal inside the lines being intersected. And then same side exterior angles are angles on the same side of a transversal, but outside, right? So that would be like, um, here's our transversal. I like that in pink, because it's hard to keep it straight when you can't see the entire picture. The pink line is our transversal. The other two lines are the lines being intersected. These are all of our interior angles. These are our exterior angles. So same side exterior would be angles four and seven, or angles one and six. Example, angles four and seven, angles one and six. And same side interior angles are, it's kind of like 
um, the alternate interior angles or alternate exterior angles, but they're angles on the same side of transversal. Angles, same side, transversal, outside, intersected lines. All right, so that's all of our angle relationships that we are going to be talking about. And if you didn't get a good look at that, check out the, um, the other, I guess, picture or whatever that you're supposed to copy down and upload your version of it um, in, this, uh, in the, one of your folder assignments here. But um, it has the same picture just zoomed out and it looks a little neater. Whoever made this tried to get creative and use fun fonts and stuff and it ended up looking really messy, but that's okay. All right, then on the back side here of the notes, identify each of the following using the cube shown. It's a little bit hard to see the cube in my printed picture here. I didn't have it printed in color, um, but like I said, it is included in, in the note files here in this folder. So you can look at it there if it helps. Um, but first of all, we need to name all segments that are parallel to line ED. So here's E, here's D. We're talking about this guy right here. So how many line segments in this box are parallel to this guy, they never cross. So we would say ED, um, AF, that's a segment, not a line, so it shouldn't go on infinite. You just put the, the uh, line over top without the arrows. This guy back here, BG, and this guy up here, CH. So as you can see, they're all lines parallel to each other. They will never cross over each other. Those are our line segments parallel to um, ED. Then we need to uh, name all the segments skew to EH. So here's EH right down here. This guy, I hope I can highlight it, but I can't. So what are lines that are not parallel, but that will never intersect? Well, what are the lines that intersect EH, ED, and CH, so those, those don't work. Those are not skew because they actually intersect EH. What are the lines parallel to EH? Well, CD, AB, FG, right? This guy, this guy, and this guy are parallel to this. These two actually intersect to this guy, as well as FE and GH, they intersect this guy. So any of the lines that touch line EH are not skew. A skew line is not parallel and it never intersects, right? So I'm going to kind of mark off the lines that are not skew. This guy is not skew, it touches my line EH. These guys are not skew. This guy back here is not skew. This is parallel to EH, so it's not skew. Same as this, same as this. So now all of the lines that I have not highlighted should be lines that are skew to line EH. Look at, for example, line AD. Is line AD parallel to line EH? No, they go in different directions. AD goes this way, EH goes front and back, right? Is AD intersecting EH? No, they're never gonna cross. AD is way up here going side to side flat. EH is down here going forward and backward. They're never gonna cross, but they're not parallel. So AD, how about BC? Same thing, it's never gonna cross line EH, but it's also not parallel, so BC. Then we have FA, this guy right here is never ever ever gonna cross this line right here, FA. And then lastly we have BG, back here, up and down, back here. It was never cross EH here. So those are skew lines, it's in three dimensional figure. It's any line that does not intersect a line segment and is not parallel to a line segment. Then we have C, all planes parallel to ABG. So flat surface ABG, ABG, is this side of the box back here. It's kind of around the back, we can't really see it, but this flat side over here. So what are the flat surfaces on this box that are parallel to that side? Well, not the top and bottom, because they intersect that plane not the front and the back because they intersect that flat surface. So just basically this, this side over here, this C, D, H, E. To name a flat surface, you only need three points. So it doesn't matter which three we use, a C, a D, a H, or an E. I'm gonna call it plain 
CDH. But as long as you use a C, a D, an H, or an E together, three of them, then you're good to go. And then lastly, all planes parallel to DCB. DCB, that's the top of this box up here. So what planes are parallel? Well, none of the sides, because they all intersect this plane. They all meet up, touch this plane. So the only plane in the whole box that doesn't touch this one is the one on the direct other side here, which is F-E-H-G. So you use any three of those four letters, F, G, H, or G. I'm gonna call it plane E, H, G. If you had an F in there, that's fine too. Okay, so hopefully that kind of helps. I did, I am going to put my filled in notes, upload them here for you guys, in case it's tough for you to sit through the video. It's much easier to understand watching the video, but you can go back and look, and it's like color coded. I made it on my tablet with um, special like drawing different pins and different stuff. It's not actual paper, it's on the tablet. So it's easier to see all this. Okay, next, in the diagram, line T is a transversal of lines Q and R. So here is a picture, and we've got lines Q and R going kind of into a V. They're not parallel, but they're two lines, and they're getting cut through or intersected by this transversal line, which is line T. This guy right here, and I can highlight that in pink. And by uh, cutting through two lines with a transversal, it creates eight angles, right? And we can see them numbered here. The one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we've got these. So now we're answering questions on that. I cannot fit all that out. Okay. Um, find all the transversal angle pair relationships by naming the angles. So name the interior angles. So here, which are the interior angles? Which angles are inside the two lines? Four, three, five, and six. It didn't say same side or alternate. It's just asking for all the interior angles. So everything between these two lines, four, five, um, three, four, five, and six, those are our angles. Angle three, angle four, angle five, and angle six. Okay, next question. Uh, the exterior angles, that's all the rest of them, right? They're not in between these two lines. They're out here or out here. So that's angles 1, 2, and 7, 8. Angles 1 and 2, 7, and 8 are exterior angles. This first one's supposed to say angle 1. It looks like the number 4, but it's not supposed to. It's supposed to be the angle 1. Okay, and then see consecutive interior angles. So if we look here, our interior angles are all of these guys, right? Consecutive means they're on the same side of the pink line. So three and uh, sorry, four and five are consecutive interior, and also three and six are consecutive interior angles. So angle three and five, angle. Oh, sorry, angle four and five. Angle four and five, and then angle three and six. Those are our same side, wait, was it all to consecutive interior angles? Oh, yeah, four, five, three, and six. Next, we wanna answer the alternate interior angles. So if four and five are on the same side of the transversal, four and six are on opposite sides. So four and six are alternate interior. Same with five and three. Five and three are alternate interior. Three and five, it doesn't really matter what order you say it in. Then we have alternate exterior angles. So our exterior angles are these two down here, seven and eight. These two up here, one and two. If they're on the same side of the transversal, they're same side uh, angles. If they're on different sides, they are alternate angles. So alternate exterior would be angles one and seven. And then also two and eight. Those are alternate exterior. Lastly, corresponding angles. If I were to draw like a window around each of these intersections and move one window over top of the other, which window panes would fall right on top of each other, right? So angle one and angle three are both in the same position. They're the top left angle of each intersection. So angle one and three, 
angle two and angle six, angle four and angle eight, they're both on the bottom left, and angle th uh, three and seven. Those are corresponding angles. They're different angles, they're in different intersections, but they're in the same position in each intersection. Okay, almost done. Example two, classify the relationship between each pair of angles as alternate interior, exterior, corresponding, or consecutive interior angles. So here, two and six, we're looking at this angle and this angle over here. Well, if I were to draw a box around this intersection and draw a box around this intersection, two and six are in the same position. They're both in that bottom right window pane. Okay, so these are um, corresponding angles. Then angles one and seven, one and seven. Well, these are outside of these two lines. They're on the outside, so they're exterior. And here's our transversal. They're on different sides of the transversal. So these are alternate exterior angles. Okay, then we have three and eight. Here's three and here's eight. They're both interior angles. They could reach out and high five each other. And they're on the same side of the transversal. So these are consecutive interior. Consecutive interior angles. And then lastly, we have angle three and angle five. So these are both interior angles. They're in between these two lines here, but they're on different sides of the transversal. So these are alternate interior. angles. Okay, over here, you try. So you can always pause this video and try and answer these on your own and then hit play and see if you're correct. The driveway at the bus station are shown. Identify the transversals connecting each pair of angles uh, in the figure, then classify the relationship between each pair of angles. So angles one and two. Here's angle one, here's angle two. We're trying to classify the transversal. So the two lines that angle one and angle two are created by are these guys, right? Angle, uh, sorry, line S and line X. Those are our lines. So they are cut by a transversal, which is this guy, line V. So line V is our transversal, line V. And then what's the relationship between angle one and angle two? Well, if we were to draw a box around each intersection, they're both in that top left window pane, right? So they are corresponding. I don't have enough room to write it. Angles two and three. So here's two, here's three. Imagine if this line kept extending, I've got my two parallel lines cut by a transversal here that creates angle two and angle three. So line V is their transversal. Put trans. And then what's their relationship, two and three? They look like they are interior, they're in between these two lines, but they're on different sides of line V. One is above it, one's below it. So these are alternate interior angles. And then lastly, four and five. So I can highlight these now because this is the last one. Angle four is right here. Angle five is right here. So it appears that these two lines, oh, sorry, these two lines are formed by this, this guy and this guy. So these are our two intersected lines. And where's the transversal that cuts through them? It's this one. This big line, right? So that's line Y. This is line Y. That's our transversal. So tran line Y. And then the relationship between these angles, well, they're inside of these two parallel lines. So they're interior, but they're on the same side of this purple transversal. So they're consecutive interior. One right after the other. There's no other angles in between them. Yeah, there's this line right here, which creates an angle, but we're ignoring that right now. We're only looking at a transversal and the two lines that create angles four and five. Everything else is like white noise. We're not paying attention.
All right, and last bit of the notes here. Check your understanding. Identify each of the following by using the figure below. All planes parallel to Z, W, X. So Z, W, X is the top part of this box, right? There's a shoe box. It's the lid. So what are all the planes that are parallel? Just the one straight across from it, the T, S, V, U, that bottom part there. So you only need three letters. I'm going to say T, S, V. Plane T, S, V, parallel. Um, B, a segment skew to T, S that contains point W. So first we want to find T, S. Here's line T, S. So it's got to be skew to T, S. So it can't intersect it, it can't be parallel. So I'm gonna highlight all the ones that intersect or are parallel. This crosses it, this crosses it, this crosses it, this crosses it. And then TS is parallel to this line, this line, and this line. So anything not highlighted in pink is fair game, but we want our skew line to contain point W. So how about ZW? Either line ZW or WU. Either one of those lines is skew to TS. And these are line segments because they end. They're part of a shape. They are not infinite lines, so they end. So we just draw a line over them. We don't draw the little arrows. And then finally, all segments parallel to line SV. <coughs> SV, here, can I highlight it in? I had all my hair. I'll try and do it in orange. SV is this guy right here, this line across the bottom. So we want to find all the line segments parallel to that, right? Well, here's the bottom. So this guy up top, this guy up top, and this guy down here on the bottom that goes around the back. We can't see it. So YX, ZW, and TU. YX, ZW, TU. Those lines are parallel to this guy. It's a little hard to show. Uh, when we're not in class, I'll see if I can get a manipulative and, and use it and do a little video um, with it to show skew lines and whatnot better. But now you can kind of see what we're talking about with angle relationships and how they relate to shapes, geometric shapes. Let me know if you have questions.